okay, so we just installed Cinema 4D R17. It's looking pretty much the same, but um, I'm gonna show you six new features. So to be honest, overall, there's not a huge difference from R16. Um, most of the changes are pretty technical, but um, I'm just gonna start by uh, creating a cube. And one of the new um, additions is this Take Manager. So I'm just gonna set up two cameras. Uh, this camera here and then I'm just gonna change the view slightly come close over here create a new camera call this one close call this one far and I'm just gonna look through each one so we have these two cameras so in the take managers we can basically set up takes uh, similar to a movie so this can be the close take and then I'm gonna make this the far take and then assign the cameras. So close and for this one far. So we can basically look through each take. So what this basically allows us to do is um, instead of like setting up different scenes uh, for each camera and then rendering the whole scene and then doing the editing in After Effects, we can basically render uh, the frame ranges here. So it's just a way of managing uh, scenes. Okay, so I'm just going to move quickly to the next feature. I'm going to create a cube again. And I'm going to create a new material. Call it a cube mat. I'm just going to apply this to the cube. And as you can see here, we have some new uh, additions to the color uh, options. So we have a wheel. Uh, we have the old kind of matrix. Um, I don't know what this is, but we basically have, um, when we basically choose a color, we can also choose a, a complementary color. So there's basically um, options that let you um, kind of look at color harmonies. So in this case, uh, as you know from movies, um, the tone that complements uh, the skin, skin color is uh, blue, teal, sorry. So orange and teal is a pretty widely used uh, movie uh, color harmony, but it gives you kind of different uh, algorithms here. So this is like a, a kind of 50-50 color harmony and then it gives you like uh, kind of different variations of each one. Um, and it gives you like these options down here which you can select. That's just something to look into. I'm not gonna go into too much detail but uh, there are some new color options and color harmony options. Now I'm just gonna create uh, a couple of spheres. As you remember, we can create uh, meta balls so I'm just gonna create a couple of spheres one here one here I'm gonna create a meta ball tag and drop these spheres into that tag uh, as you remember we can create these kind of blobby effects which are pretty cool I'm just gonna spread these out so what we can now do is we can add any object so I'm just gonna add a cube make it a bit bigger and I'm gonna add this to the list. Put it over here somewhere, put it in the list. And you'll see uh, something's happened. I'm just gonna add a tag, a metaball tag, and go to line mode. And now you can see we have this cool cage effect. So it's basically uh, using this cube. I'm just gonna increase the subdivisions so you can see the cool effect. Look at that. So that's pretty awesome and we have a few other options, uh, triangle which makes it like a solid mesh so we can create these really um, kind of cool effects, blob animations, Han Solo and Carbonite maybe. So that is cool feature number three. Uh, there's been improvements to the pen tool so I'm just going to create uh, a spline so we'll just click and it's a sharp point if you hold down control, sorry if you click and drag it's a tangent point. Uh, if you hold down shift you can create sort of a sharp uh, one tangent uh, point, a point with just one tangent handle. Uh, so I'm just going to close the spline, uh, hold down control and you can basically do a slice which is basically an add point and if you click on a point it gets rid of it. So uh, we had these options before. Uh, what we have now is this cool uh, smooth spline smooth pen. So you can actually smooth the spline but not just that, you can also uh, carry out kind of operations like pull as if you're smudging, uh, sorry, smudging the spline and we can even inflate it, uh, do all kinds of 
a crazy stuff. I'm just going to drop this into a, a extrude. So we can create these cool sculptures, spline sculptures. And we can even project it. So I'm just going to quickly create a sphere. Uh, put it behind it very quickly. And all you have to do is, I'm just going to line this up. I'm going to click on the spline, uh, go to the smooth tool, choose project, and then I'm just going to paint this. As you can see, uh, if I just turn around, it's actually projecting this onto that surface. It's pretty amazing. Um, so this could be very useful for creating, like, I don't know, medieval kind of shields, um, logos on. Uh, Kind of curved objects and spheres things like that so it's a bit messy but that option is there and it is a uh, pretty remarkable okay next i'm just going to show you the variation shader so i'm just going to create a cube uh, actually maybe a sphere i'm going to drop that into the cloner delete the cube make these much smaller make this a grid array and increase the count slightly and I'm going to create a new material, drop that on the cloner. So uh, a new shader we have is um, the variation shader. So I'm just going to click that. So we had something similar before. Uh, we could use the multi shader before to kind of uh, change the color of each cloner. But we now have this option as well. As you can see, it's just kind of creating random colors for each clone. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, it's actually got a lot more potential. I've only explored it kind of briefly. Um, I'm not entirely sure how far you can take this. Um, I'm just going to load a preset. Uh, that tiny arrow here, if you open it up, you have presets. Uh, it's quite a hidden option. Hasn't seemed to have changed the color. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure how to use this exactly but um, I know it works similar to the multi shader so if you have like a bunch of pebbles and you just want a slight kind of color variation between each pebble this uh, is a shader you can use so I'm just gonna close this I'm just gonna create a new scene so the last uh, new feature I'm just gonna create a sphere uh, I'm gonna add some keyframes for the position actually you know I might create a cube Put it over here, keyframes. Uh, put it back here, go back to zero, add some keyframes here. So moving forward and then go to 90. Move it forward, down a bit, add some keyframes here. Okay, we have this random animation. It's pretty messy, but um, we have some new uh, F-curve tools. So I'm just gonna right click, animation, show F-curve. So we go to the graph editor f-curve graph editor I'm gonna click the color you can kind of see which is red so usually we have these tangent handles uh, which can kind of really affect how the animation uh, progresses so uh, the smoother these tangent handles the smoother the uh, cubes gonna move um, so they, they're linked to easing and um, we can create like a custom tangent but now we have these new presets here so classic which creates like a nice even tangent uh, both sides are equal uh, we have weighted where it tries to like uh, give each side a different weight I think uh, in order to create a much smoother animation and um, finally I'm just gonna hold down control and create a new point I'm just gonna adjust this um, trying to create a sort of hump in the animation so if I just select this point here and go to no overshoot it basically gets rid of any hump that might kind of rise above this kind of point. So if this was moving like this, if you go to no overshoot, it kind of smooths out uh, uh, the curve using the tangent handles, uh, using a different tan tangent algorithm. So pretty technical, but uh, you have some new um, spline and tangent options, which is great news for animators and something you should definitely look at.